Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some touch her and die romance recommendations. These are romances where the heroes of these books are very possessive of their woman and if you touch their woman, you gon' die. Okay, some of these are actually pretty dark, so just like fair warning with that, but that's how these men are. They get pretty dark at times. So let's get into these recommendations. First is Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. This is actually also a, a nanny romance on top of it being a mafia one. Our heroine here is looking for a nanny for his six-year-old, seven-year-old son, um, and he's actually a mafia boss and he ends up hiring our heroine. She has a disability. She's not able to speak. She experienced a vocal cord injury and so she cannot speak. She communicates through sign language and she actually ends up also teaching the child that she eventually becomes the nanny for sign language as well. And they really form this amazing, wonderful bond. Um, but this is the romance between her and the man who hired her, um, his father. And there's a lot of dark elements in here because he lives such a dangerous life. Um, and there's also like secrets and plot twists and turns in here that left me on the edge of my seat. So if you want like a darker nanny romance, I definitely recommend this one. Um, but there are a few scenes in here when the heroine's life is in danger and the hero will literally like tear apart every single person who laid a hand on her. And I'm like, dang, this man can get it. The Perfectly Perfect series by Neva Altaj has <laughs> this trope in it by the spades, I think in almost every single one of the books. Um, but I'm gonna talk about two today. First is Stolen Touches, which is book number five in the series. This one's about Malene and Salvatore. Salvatore starts out by stalking Malene and um, ends up roping her into marrying him by force. Essentially, she's not happy about it, um, but he gets his way. It's fine, it's totally fine. Um, and they end up having to live together. And uh, that's all I really wanna say. I don't wanna spoil it, but it's so stinking good. I love this one. It's one of my favorite ones in the series for a reason. It's so good. There's also this cat that Malene like brings in with her because he's like, you have to move in with me now. She goes, okay, well, if I move in with you, I gotta bring my cat. <laughs> the cat is an absolute menace. It's so funny. Um, but again, you have people trying to harm our heroine and the hero is gonna like tear those people apart. Same thing in book number six, which is Fractured Souls. This one is definitely the darkest book that Neva has written. This one's about Aza and um, Pavel. Aza was kidnapped by some awful men into a illegal trafficking ring, right? And she ends up like running out into the street one night. She ends up killing the guy who's assaulting her and running into the road. And Pavel is just driving his car and almost hits her with his car. And it was just bringing her to the infirmary at the mafia home that he works for and takes her back to his place afterward to keep her safe. Aza really finds comfort and solace in Pavel, even despite like their age difference and the fact that he's this giant man, um, she sees him as like her safe. Haven. Let's just say he hunts down every last man who ever laid a finger on this woman. Okay. Emily McIntyre is another author that does this trope phenomenally well. Okay, so obviously Hooked. Book number one, so good. It's a, a darker retelling of Peter Pan. Not really a retelling of Peter Pan. It's very loosely inspired by it. Um, so Hook is our hero in here and he ends up falling for his arch nemesis, Peter Pan's daughter, Wendy. And at one point he even like kidnaps her cause she, he thinks that she betrayed him and all this stuff. But like this gets dark at points, but then he realizes like, oh, maybe she's not lying to me. And he has to like grovel his butt off. Anyway, there's that one. And then there's also Scarred, which is book number two, which is like very loosely reimagined from the Lion King. Our hero in here, our Scar character is the, second brother to this king who is um, arranged to marry this woman named Sarah. And from the moment that he sees Sarah, he's like, I'm going to make her life a living hell. And I'm also going to make her mine because she's not going to be with my brother. My brother does not deserve her. Um, and whew, there's some scenes where he has to like beat up some men because they touched what's his. Like, mm -mm. I eat it up. Another author that's really good at this is Sophie Lark. So Snow by Sophie Lark has this trope done in it. Snow is a like underground mafia fighter. He fights in this underground mafia ring and the heroine has been sucked into the mafia world, not from her own choosing. Her dad is actually indebted to the mafia 
and um, the only way she can get her father out of it is to be the doctor for the mafia. Um, and so she's not like kind of there willingly, but she's there during one of the fighting matches and she ends up meeting Snell. And it's essentially like love at first sight for both of them, but they cannot be together because of the mafia ties that both of them have. Like it's very forbidden. No one knows how to fight his butt off. So you best believe that if you touch this woman, he's gonna beat your butt up. Okay, if you want an alien romance, I have Hearts Prisoner by um, Olivia Riley. This one is about our heroine who is a scientist who has been hired to study this very dangerous alien species. He's been captured and locked up on this very dangerous alien space station that is completely full of alien species, alien species that are there to study. And he is probably like one of the most dangerous out of all of them. And she's been hired to study him, but she's actually like, not the same as her other scientists. Like she's not there to poke and prod at him. She wants to get to know him and like get to know him like as a person, like he's a person. She wants to get to know him as a person. She doesn't really agree with all these other doctors and like poking and prodding him and sometimes even shocking him and using force on him. And the two of them befriend each other, learn each other's languages, get to know each other through the cell bars and um, end up falling for each other throughout all of it. And there's one point in the book where he escapes and um like a bunch of other aliens escapes too and they're out to get her and he's going to rip them apart <laughs> pestilence by laura thalassa is definitely an interesting one because um pestilence hurts this woman so many times the heroine of the story oh wait first of all pestilence is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse he is like the plague one so he's sent to earth to like spread plague around the earth to eliminate the human race Okay, and the heroine of the story is like, I'm going to take one for the team, try and kill him. She ends up killing him, burning him alive. She does not know that Pestilence cannot die. He comes back to life, full of vengeance, is going to get back at this woman who killed him, ends up kidnapping her and forcing her to watch him kill the entire human race in front of her eyes. While doing so, he ends up like hurting her on multiple levels, like dragging her on his horse, scraping her uh, all up. Like she's literally dragging by her hands, like on rope, like hold back scraping across the ground for miles and miles and miles and miles this horse is dragging her that's just one of the instances where this guy like tortures her okay um but then there comes a shifting point where um people are out to get her because she's with him they don't know she's not with him willingly they try to get her and he is not having it <laughs> he's like you can come at me all you want but come at her no she's mine to torture you cannot touch her. Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin is another one. This book is so dark, so like, please be aware of that, please. Um, so this is about our female pirate, um, what's her name, Beckett, right? Bennett, not Beckett, whoa. So Bennett Sharp is a female pirate and she has two men after her. She has her husband, her pirate husband, out to find her, capture her, get her back. And there's also a pirate hunter named Lord Ashley Cutler who is out to do the same thing. Okay, um, so we have these two men trying to find her and ruin her life. There are multiple instances in here where both men are out to kill anyone who touches or lays a finger on her. But like, they lay a finger on her themselves. You know what I mean? Like this book gets dark at points, okay? Um, but there's like a really, really, really dark portion of this book where she is getting abused by some awful men. And who do they have it in for them. Let me just say that. And the last book that I have is Yearning for Her by Tiffany Roberts. This is a paranormal romance between an incubus hero and our heroine who's a human woman named Willow. She does not know that he's an incubus by the way when they get together but they have this one night tryst after she has a horrible breakup. And the hero near Kian is an incubus so he feeds off of passion and lust from people and he has to like feed off of that like every few hours I want to say. One night with Willow has him like fed for like a week or two. But then like he realizes I cannot feed off of anybody else now that I've had this woman. Like my body will physically not let me. And he can't find her because she left the night after the morning after. Cannot find her is like completely like becoming a husk because of it. Cannot feed off of anybody else. And then eventually he does find her and things happen, okay. Um, but man, he will go towards the to the ends of the earth to make this woman his. He literally starts walking around the streets trying to find this woman <laughs> in like the middle of a very popular city. There's one point in the book where the heroine's in danger and he's not 
he's not having that. Okay, there you have it. Those are 10 books with the touch her and die trope. A very possessive, obsessive men. Okay, um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the black heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.